well, not everybody, but many people, they, they use so many chemicals and they are so s- not, not stuck in a way, but they've learned to have uh, agriculture in a, in a certain way. In the easy way. And if you try to ask for help, the answer is chemicals. Um, and then if you do it in a different way, you're kind of like the weird person in town um, that are that are doing things in a in a, in a, well, in, a in, in a different way, I would say, and um, that makes it very difficult because you want to show people that this is actually a healthier way of working with nature. But then the only thing that you can show is that everything gets sick and everything just dies out, and it actually takes a while for it to to, uh, to really again. recover and to work because we've done so much damage. To the earth and to the soil um, that in this process sometimes we kind of also lose our motivation because last year we didn't have any grapes everything just died and, yeah. it, and then our neighbor for example well not our neighbor but someone Everyone comes to us, and us. They, they, they go and say like oh you should have put chemicals in it because now you don't have grapes no every time they pass by they're like yeah sufre a sufre i get a sufre a sufre just put it and you will have grapes. And we're like, yeah, but that kills everything that is underneath. Yeah. <laughs> I have worked for hotels my entire life, so I know the amount of waste that the hotels produce. So when we arrived here, we were like, okay, we have to start in a completely ecological way. No wastes. And afterwards, when we were trying to produce our own food, like we realized that we weren't able to grow absolutely nothing. So that's when we decided to start studying the part of soil recovery and we just fused them. The constant fight of trying to live with nature and trying to explain other people the importance of uh, living in an eco-friendly way, um, educating a bit about this topic, uh, but most of all keep adapting to, let's say, to the future, that we don't just forget about nature and that we always keep working with nature and that we are part of it instead of trying us to be more separate from it, like to be actually more part of it. One of our biggest challenges is changing the mindset basically to um, accepting that the only thing that we can do is be an example and show people the things that they can do or the things that they can change and also show the things that we are doing. Um, without getting frustrated or getting upset or without giving people the idea that they need to do this in a certain way. Um, that will be one of the biggest challenges that we have personally. And as soon as you teach them that you're able to produce your own liquids for the cleaning or uh, yeah, they are like, oh, you, you do it yourself and how much do you spend? Like, I do it one time per month and I perhaps I spend 10 euros and, and that's it. Mm. And no plastics, no nothing, and yeah, you just go green. They're like, oh, I want the ebook. <laughs> Getting those type of guests here at our place that are really interested in the work that we are doing actually gives us a lot of mo- motivation to keep doing this. Because um, it's, it's not always easy, uh, you know, um, especially, let's say, ecological production. And it actually goes more wrong than it goes good. And getting this feedback from, from your guests uh, saying that you're doing a, a good job, just sometimes a little pat on your shoulder or just some motivation really keeps us going as well. Let's say if in the future everybody that leaves the island and we could, would at least give them an idea of how they could change things in the, like at home, uh, that would be amazing. Like if every tourist on the island would leave the island with a sustainable mindset. Yeah, to plant the seed on them.